Today's lesson is going to involve taking an extruded surface built off of a spline at the center line of the vehicle or whatever it is you're building, again this is at the center line, and morphing this surface using X-form and maintaining my uh, surface being symmetrical about that center plane. When I go into the X-form tool, it's not clearly evident how to morph this surface across the center plane of your uh, project, your part, whatever that may be. Maybe this is a, a deck lid surface or a hood surface or a roof surface. And this method allows you to quickly do that. So when I use my X form and I specify my initial extrude, you'll notice that I get a degree of 3, 1, 1. And this is based off of the complexity of this initial curve that I used. So that spline is driving these control points here. Now, if, or I shouldn't say driving those control points, it's close, but it's not, it's not dead on. If I, if I minimize this or I can increase this, I can get it close, deviate off of the curve, however you want. What I do need to do is I need to increase the amount of control points in the V direction. So when I increase those, you'll notice that I get these equally spaced across that center line. Now that I have those equally spaced across the center line, I'm going to begin morphing my surface. Poles I want to modify, I'm going to pick this row, and I'm going to specify or hold the control key down and pick this row. And then now I'm going to go into move, normal, and as you can see, as I move and morph my surface, both of those rows are moving and morphing. You'll also note that I have a, a porcupine analysis through section curve set up so I can see what's going on with that shape. If I were to come in here and just simply move, hold the shift key down, and just grab one of these, you'll notice that I no longer have a symmetrical surface. So I'm just going to control Z and undo that and bring that back so it is symmetrical. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to take these control points and I need to spread them out. So I want to take this row and move it this way and I want to take this row and move it this way. And again, but I, I want to make sure that I do it in such a way where I do not break my uh, symmetrical um, surface from side to side. And if I were to try to move one and eyeball it and move the other one and eyeball it, it's very difficult. It's actually impossible to make it perfect. If you see now, if I pick this and I hold the control key and I pick this and I tell it I want to move this in a specific vector, for instance. Pick my vector. Now when I pick these poles, you'll notice that everything is pushing over to the one side. I don't want that. So what I want to do is I'm going to go into scale. Under scale, there's an op option down here. It's called scale center. So with using the scale tool, I'm going to define the center of this surface. Well, right now the surface is perfectly symmetrical. And because it is perfectly symmetrical, if I leave this at object center, that means the center line of the vehicle is going to be what this scales uh, my control points about. So if I come in here and specify a vector and say, oh, all right, I'm going to move this in the y direction, and I go back up to my pole selection, and I grab this now, and I move this, you'll notice that I'm now moving my control points equally on either side because I'm scaling them to each side equally. The nice thing about this method is I create a surface that is completely and utterly perfect, absolutely perfect across the center line of the vehicle. Other methods that people will use oftentimes will include taking a surface and extruding it out in one direction and then morphing it and getting it formed to where they want. Then they'll do something like a match or edge symmetry to get this to align to a, uh, a surface or an edge across the center plane. I should say across the center plane. You don't get to pick anything. It just does it across whatever plane you specify. And then uh, you would symmetry that to get that to the other side. Um, you still have a seam at the center. You still have overly complex surface driving your... Um, surface going across the mid plane of the vehicle. So those requirements for good quality Class A, and this is for any CAD system, are 
as far as I'm concerned, I mean, you know, some people will argue for or against, um, but for me, as far as I'm concerned, the best way to do this is to make sure you have one large patch that flows across the entire center of the project or your vehicle. Now, as you can see, with all the morphing that I've done, this whole thing is pulled away from that curve pretty far. As far as that curve, again, I'm using it as a reference. It doesn't have to be perfect. It needs to be close to where I need it. And because it needs to be close, I'm just going to go move, and I'm going to pick, hold the control key down. I can do that, or I can do a control, or I can I just do a, a click and drag. I can box everything in. Now for my vector direction, I'm going to pick my Z. Now that it's picked, all I need to do is come in here, grab this, any one of them, doesn't matter, and pull this up to get it close to that curve. There we go. So now that, that surface is basically hitting that curve. It's very close. Again, that curve is merely a suggestion of uh, where the initial surface is going to start out from. That's basically driving that first extrusion. I'm going to select OK. And as you can see, I have a very nice surface, no interruptions on it anywhere. It's basically perfect across that center plane. If I look at the curve to the surface, there's a little bit of a gap there. Let me update the display. And again, I can pull and get it closer to that curve if need be. But I, what I do is I basically drive a curve through there that looks perfect. That may deviate a little bit off of the initial scan or the section curve that I have and then get that surface really close to that initial curve. Again, don't spend a lot of time on that curve. You don't need to. It just needs to be kind of close because you're going to go back and sweeten up the surface. Again, that's just a, a basic example of, uh, of sort of an idea of what you want the surface to look like. If I double click on that spline and I want to modify it, so if I pick a vector, I want to move, let's say I want to move these points up and this one, hit my OK, you'll notice it potato chips. And of course, because of the history, everything updates nice and clean. So when you're doing things with an X form, and it's basically one of the most powerful tools, it's just you have to understand the movements, how they move, like with the method. You have rotate, scale, and planarize. So if you need to do something across the center line, you can use the scale and then use the center of objects. So long as the object that you are manipulating is already symmetrical to the plane that you want. Now you have other options in here you can select. So if I want to specify a scale center point, I can specify a scale center point. Okay. Or I could specify here's my point. Um, and everything will scale to that point as well. But I'll get more into these different methods of movement in other videos. Right now I'm just trying to give you an understanding of how to create uh, surfaces across the center line that will remain perfectly symmetrical.